Welcome back to channel everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about how you can send an email notification to SharePoint group using Power Automate or how you can call your SharePoint group inside Power Automate. By default, we don't have this functionality in Power Automate. Let's just talk about how we can do that. So this is my send email to groups list. What I've created, what I want is whenever I create a new item or added existing item and email notification sent to a specific SharePoint group. So I'll go in my Power Automate and try to create a new flow, automated cloud flow and name is call SharePoint group. Trigger point will be when an item is created or modified. Select my site name and dev and list name is send email to group. And if I select now send email options from here, Outlook, send email. I can select a person email ID. Let's suppose I select my name here. I get that. But if I select any group's name, I didn't get anything. So let's just talk about uh, the group first. I'll go in my site permissions, advanced permission here. As you can see, I have multiple groups here. One group is developer groups. So if I select that uh, developer groups, I didn't get anything here. So now to get the developer groups here, what we have to do is add an HTTP action here. Select site address, the site we are targeting, that is dev site. Method will be get and then in this URI, what we have to get is basically that uh, group details from that SharePoint site. So how we're going to do that is using API. So the general format for API is underscore API slash web. In this case, we are targeting site groups. So I'll type site groups. And then users. So in this way, I'll get uh, all the site groups detail here. But if I want to target a specific group, in my case, I want to target this developer group. So the membership group ID is 28, as you can see. So I have to just type 28 in brackets. I'll get this particular group details. So as of now, I can select my name till the time. Test. And I'll say test. I'll save this flow and uh, I'll try to create a new item here. Item one, save this one. And we'll see that uh, our flow will trigger automatically. As you can see here, the flow ran successfully. I'll go inside my successful flow and I'll check this HTTP request and in the output section, I'll copy this entire output. I'll paste this inside my text editor. So just to explain you that what we got is starting from a curly brush, that's a JSON format. We got this D node, then this result node. And inside that we have all the data, which is enclosed in an array. This is the sign for an array. And if you go down, you can see that the user emails column is there where we have user email ID and this is what exactly we need. I did this flow again and after the HTTP request I will select uh, select operation select from the output of this HTTP request body of this one and now I'll just code and you can see that from I'll just give this at the rate and I'll select till this body section here paste this inside my text editor now you can see that what we got in body is output of this uh, send HTTP request to SharePoint then body and as I mentioned to you that we are specifically looking for this uh, array inside the result node so I'll put a question mark here again, then type D node here. And then again, same format and then results. Now I have reached at this extent here till the array. 
So I'll click on done and now I'll go to expression section. I'll paste this one. So now this select statement will select directly from this result array here. And inside that what we have to map is we have to map I'll go into our expression items and we have to map emails here. So we'll get all the emails. That's it. And now we have all the emails in our array structure. What we have to do now is data operations, compose. Now, I'll tell you what I'm doing with compose. Now I'll write a join here. And what I'm joining basically is <coughs> dynamic content, output of the select and the comma and then semicolons. So why I'm doing this? Because all of the emails that I'm getting is not semicolon separated. And when we insert anything to our these two sections, let's suppose I'm putting an email ID, we separate that by semicolons, right? To achieve that, I have used this join operations. So now in the two section of send email, we'll directly select this dynamic content from the compose output it will be semicolon separated by default if we have multiple email ID and it will send email directly to those email ID what we got. So we have to just save this workflow and uh, now go back to our list. I'll try to add new item. Item 2. Save this one. Go to my flow. As of now, there is only one instance. We'll wait this flow to run. So as you can see that uh, our new instance of flow succeeded. I'll go to the history and I will check directly the send email one. And you can see that there was two user in my this group and this email successfully sent to these two users. And when we click on this compose one, you will see that uh, the user's email we got in semicolons format. And now I'll go to my Outlook directly. And you can see that I got an email directly here, which is mentioning this email has been sent to two different user. So that's the way you can actually call your SharePoint group inside Power Automate and can send an email notifications and can include them in approval or any kind of stuff that you're doing with the Power Automate. I hope you like this video. If you do like, don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you so much for watching Learn and Tech.